Unfortunately, Pinocchio and I have some not great news to bring you today about Starlink. Many of you have been waiting for what probably feels like forever to get your Starlink and I'm here to tell you that a lot of those wait times have been pushed even further ahead to late 2022 or even early 2023. And while a lot of this isn't in your control, especially when we factor in the chip shortage, there is something that some people have done recently and they're kicking themselves now because it has actually changed their wait time and bumped them even further down the line. So I wanted to make this video to make sure you don't make what I believe is a mistake that some people are making and feeling very frustrated afterward. SpaceX recently updated the Starlink website to address the fact that the chip shortage will be delaying some of those orders that so many of you are waiting on. And the website now includes a question asking when customers will receive their Dishy McFlatface. The website says, quote, silicon shortages have delayed production, which has impacted our ability to fulfill orders. Please visit your account page for the most recent estimate on when you can expect your order to be fulfilled. Now, according to several people on Reddit, what's happening is some of you guys are trying to see when your estimated time frame for delivery might be, and maybe there's something inaccurate about your address or you wanna make that location more precise. They're changing that, and then what's happening, at least according to the people on Reddit, is they're getting bumped down from where they were. Their, their place in line is no longer theirs, and so that's gotta be really frustrating because I know so many of you are already frustrated that you have to wait months or even over a year. So I would just advise you to stay where you're at because once you change the address, it can't be changed again. And I know that it's frustrating and we need a lot of patience right now, but I would hate for you to kind of make this mistake that I'm seeing and then really, really be frustrated. So I'm sorry to all the people who have done this, but thank you for, you know, commenting about this and hopefully helping someone else from making this mistake. As far as a nationwide rollout, we know that Elon has said he expects it to happen before the end of the month. I mean, here we are at the end of October, so should be happening pretty soon. And while they may finally exit the beta phase, I wouldn't get too excited because with these chip shortages and also just they haven't completed their, you know, low earth orbit constellation, many of you guys might be waiting for quite a while. And I'm sure you already know that for those of you who have been checking anxiously waiting when you're going to get your Starlink. So I wish I could send my unit to all of you. Unfortunately, that's just not how this works. And I did notice that the Starlink website no longer has beta service on the front page. So they should be getting pretty close if they're not already there. Another notable change, the site says Starlink can now offer download speeds between 100 megabits per second and 200 megabits per second and latency as low as 20 milliseconds in most locations. This is definitely an improvement. It used to say that users could expect to see data speeds vary from 50 to 150 megabits per second and latency from 20 milliseconds to 40 milliseconds in most locations. Of course, this was during the beta phase and many, many more satellites have been launched since then. So they're making progress, but you know, I'm, I just, my heart goes out to you guys that keep asking me, uh, you know, when you might see this in your area. Maybe you have other people in your state or in your, even your region that are getting access to this, but um, unfortunately they're just not able to serve all of the customers that want it at the moment. But, you know, I'm crossing my fingers that sure enough, soon enough, you guys will be included in the, uh, in the, in the Dishy Mc Flatface Club. And some other new details on the website, it says using advanced satellites in a low orbit, Starlink enables video calls, online gaming, streaming, and other high data rate activities that historically have not been possible with satellite internet. And I know so many of you that already have Starlink can probably agree with this statement. I wanna know from you, if you have Starlink, how has it changed your life? I mean, I feel like that's a pretty easy question to answer, but I am curious, what was it like before 
And what are you able to do now that you couldn't do before? In fact, I've talked to a few people in some older videos who this was already changing their life much, much earlier in the beta phase. If you want to check out some of those interviews, they're very interesting. This one in particular, I interviewed a leader with the Ho tribe, and that is a tribe in Washington. And he told me that getting Starlink set up for the reservation has catapulted them into the 21st century. So really, really interesting interview. And, and this is why I make these videos. I really believe that this is making a difference in the world and helping us conquer that digital divide. So I'm really hoping that for those of you who have been waiting, that you guys get it soon. We'll just have to wait and see. It's definitely a tough situation right now. And it's not just, you know, it's not just Starlink. Many industries um, across the globe are being impacted by supply chain issues. And so hopefully, you know, hopefully the situation improves soon. The website also says Starlink is not designed to handle hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, meteors, dinosaurs or other extreme forces of nature. I mean, considering the fact that they're trying to bring back the woolly mammoth, I think it's a fair disclaimer. It also adds the detail. Starlink is rated to operate outdoors between negative 30 to 50 degrees Celsius or negative 22 to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And the Wi-Fi router and power supply are also rated to operate indoors between zero to 30 degrees Celsius or 32 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. It says during moments of extreme heat or cold, Starlink may experience a slightly reduced performance. Well, for some people in Arizona a few months ago, that reduced performance was actually the entire unit shutting down. I made a video about that as well. So looks like they're fine tuning some of those details about what these units are rated for as far as temperature. So good information to have in your back pocket. So moral of the story is unfortunately, if you are one of the over half a million customers that have signed up to try out Starlink, you may need to be waiting quite a while to actually get your hands on a user terminal. Some of you guys might need to wait until late 2022 or early 2023, which is kind of really disappointing, I'm sure, but hang in there. I know so many of you guys that have this, this is really, really worth it for you. So hopefully again, hopefully things work out in your favor soon, but I wanted to give you this update and just kind of let you know some new details that I saw and I love interacting with you guys. For those of you who are new to the channel, thank you much. The, thank you much. For those of you who are new to the channel, thank you so much for checking it out. I have become Starlink girl over the last few months. It's a title that I hold near and dear to my heart and uh, also did some cool videos checking out Starship in person. If you want to check out those, check them out here. And a big special thank you to my Patreon subscribers. Your support really, really means a lot. Of course, I have a full-time job and this is something that I love to do to continue to keep you guys updated and hopefully, you know, make you smile, maybe make you laugh. Sometimes I try to be funny. I don't know if it always works, but to those of you who have been along for the ride, I really appreciate it. And I will be bringing you many videos in the future.